Hello everybody. I welcome you to this session of Advanced Search with Amazon Elasticsearch Service. I hope you have been having a great reinvent. In this session, I will be talking about Elasticsearch, peeling its outer layers and take a quick peek into how the search is handled internally. My name is Muthu Pichemani. I'm a specialist solution architect with AWS, focusing exclusively on Amazon Elasticsearch Service. Today, I'm joined by Shivang Shah, and Akbar Rangara of Incute Incorporation, who will talk about how they have been using Amazon Elasticsearch service with some of these features successfully in their product at Intuit. With that said, what is Elasticsearch? Elasticsearch at its core is a widely popular full-text search engine. While it is the top-ranked search engine, it is also ranked in top 10 database systems in the last many years. It is open source, uh, but the important characteristic of Elasticsearch is that it is built from the ground up to be a distributed and a scalable search solution. Elasticsearch has many wide use cases, um, but search and log analytics are by far the most popular of them. Many companies uh, find Elasticsearch to be attractive not just because it is open source, but also because they can realize the value of investment with Elasticsearch really quickly. And we are going to hear from Intuit later on about their uh, journey with it. So what can Elasticsearch do? First is, of course, it helps you search your data. This is what we call as uh, text search, where you send in a query in natural language, and Elasticsearch uh, searches and brings back relevant results, which is, of course, its uh, main search function. The second and a more recent form of search is what I'd like to call as a similarity search. It involves uh, internally encoding your queries and your data as array of numbers, which is more formally called vectors, that finds a similarity between your query and your data that is not strictly uh, textual. This similarity search finds uh, many applications in, say, image searching, recommendations, and so on. Another important characteristic of Elasticsearch is its uh, ability to ingest data, which could be streaming at a very high rate and uh, make it available for search function or searching almost immediately. This is highly helpful in uh, ingesting and searching a large volume of log data. And finally, one of the lesser known facts about Elasticsearch is that it is a powerful analytics engine as well. Using what it's called aggregation, it can perform a wide variety of uh, summarization or uh, patterns or trend and that too at scale. So that is a important uh, feature of Elasticsearch that's not very well known. Elasticsearch has its powerful capabilities, but uh, it is often non-trivial to set up a large scale cluster, optimize for uh, peak performance, operate and maintain it. And this is where the managed offerings for Elasticsearch comes in really handy. Uh, Amazon's uh, Elasticsearch service called Amazon ES is a fully managed service that helps you to set up, deploy, operate, and maintain Elasticsearch cluster quite easily and securely. Amazon Elasticsearch service is built on uh, open source software called Open Distro for Elasticsearch, which is 100% Apache licensed. And it comes with many enterprise-grade features like security, alerting, and so on for free. Next, I'll look into uh, what are all the goals of searching with Elasticsearch. Why do you need uh, searching in first place? Well, we need searching for a lot of things, especially for the times we are in. You might want to find the products that you want to buy online, or you want to find a movie that you want to watch next, or uh, you want to find a restaurant where to order your delivery from. More uh, uh, classically, in a, a big organization, you might want to find the shared information that is shared across your entire company. Or maybe your website is down and your developers are troubleshooting it, then they want to find the root cause of the problem. Is So no matter what the solution is, searching helps you find the relevant pieces of information to solve the product at hand. And we will see how Elasticsearch handles this searching of text internally. Broadly, the architecture of Elasticsearch uh, is, I mean, the search architecture is 
looks like this. The data to be searched uh, comes in the form of what is called as the documents. Then the indexing is a process where Elasticsearch converts these documents into a searchable form called index. And uh, analysis, as is shown here, is a process which makes all this searching possible. Broadly speaking, analysis involves breaking down these documents into token and then normalizing it before storing them into index. The important thing to see in the search architecture is that when a query comes in, it undergoes the exact same process of tokenization and normalization to find the documents you are searching for. And we will uh, see how it works internally a bit, uh, shortly now. So as I mentioned, the analyzer, the analysis is an important part of uh, text searching with Elasticsearch. And the aim of analysis process is to process a stream of text and break them into tokens. These tokens are then indexed along with the document IDs and are finally stored within the indices. The analyzer itself consists of three building blocks. The first step in the process is called the character filter, which receives a stream of text and produces another stream of text by either adding or removing or modifying characters from it. Say for example, you wanna remove the punctuation marks or you wanna remove the HTML tags from your text stream. An analyzer can have zero or more uh, character filter inside it. The second step is the tokenizer, which receives the stream of text from the character filter and breaks them down into individual tokens, normally at the word boundary or at any other rules for that matter. The tokenizer is also responsible for recording the position of each token in the stream. And the analyzer can, should have exactly only one tokenizer. The final step is the token filter, which functions similarly to a character filter, but it operates on the token assets by either adding or removing or changing the tokens. What makes uh, Elasticsearch so powerful is that the each component of this analyzer is completely configurable and you can specify a fully custom analyzer. We will see more about that uh, when Shivang and Akbar talks about it. In addition, Elasticsearch also comes with a, a, a rich set of built-in analyzer that are ready to go. For example, uh, there is a, something called simple analyzer or fingerprint analyzer and standard analyzer and so on. So some of the uh, built-in uh, tokenizers are, for example, or Edgegram and Ngram, white space tokenizer, keyword tokenizer, and so on. I won't go into all of them, but those are some of the most popular tokenizers used in the field. Let's, let's look at an example of how Elasticsearch converts the text into tokens. On the left-hand side, you see a stream of text, and we are going to analyze this using the standard analyzer. And on the right-hand side, you see a uh, tokens uh, that text has been broken into token, <coughs> excuse me, tokens and stored into an index along with its uh, offsets and position. In this example, the standard analyzer's character filter removes the punctuations like comma or a period or a hyphen. And then the tokenizer, which is called Unicode text segment, which essentially breaks the stream into uh, a set of uh, words, actually. It breaks them into the word boundaries. And finally, the lowercase uh, token filter changes all these uh, tokens into a lowercase and stores them in the index. So that's essentially how a standard analyzer works. Uh, so far, we have seen how Elasticsearch analyzes and prepares the textual data for retrieval. Amazon ES, that is Amazon Elasticsearch service, provides another kind of search that goes beyond simple text search. Uh, this is called the K nearest neighbor for Amazon Elasticsearch or KNN in short. This type of search represents any type of data as an array of number as I mentioned before called vectors. You then search for a set of numbers that is near to your query in the space of these numbers. So uh, that can be, that can use any uh, algorithm like an Euclidean distance or distance between the two points in the vector space or the cosine similarity between them. Well, let's take a uh, look at the example here. Say if you have a document that has the text called search for string in a text. If you want to find this document, you're not going to be able to find it if you give search words like uh, words finding in a paragraph. 
So because there is no none of these tokens present in the documents, but KNN makes it possible to encode them as vectors and find uh, all the documents that are semantically similar to what you specify. This is what we call semantic matching. KNN also um, enables you to encode uh, data types like images into numbers, and you can find uh, uh, any images that look similar to the query image that you supply uh, using a KNN's, uh, uh, KNN algorithm. So KNN is used for uh, uh, applications like product recommendations, as I said, or uh, product uh, semantic matching, or even fraud detection for that, uh, for that matter. So when Elasticsearch returns documents, I just want to talk about what relevance and ranking means. When Elasticsearch returns documents in its, uh, in its results, it brings what it finds as relevant and ranks them based on a relevance score. It uses a, a probabilistic uh, framework called BM25, which is based on factors like uh, term frequency, inverse document frequency, and so on. It is very popular and it uh, fits most use cases but it does not take into account any user behavior or patterns that can be used to reinforce what is relevant to a set of data to be returned for your use case. And that is where this uh, learning to rank or LTR comes in. LTR uses machine learning to make Elasticsearch understand what is more relevant for your particular use case. You do this by providing what is called a judgment list, which is just an um, expression of ideal ordering of your data. Uh, this uh, judgment list can be constructed manually with human annotators or programmatically from some data like an analytics data that you may be collecting. The next step would be to create a training data set by combining this judgment list with what is called as feature values, which can be your straight up BM25 scores. You can think of uh, features as a collection of fields that influences the relevance of your document. With the training data in place, you then build and deploy the model to retrieve the results based upon the data that you have learned. So an elastic cell then will then re-rank it based upon your ordering. So this is the functionality of Elasticsearch. The creation of a judgment list, training data, uh, and the model itself happens in a tool that is outside Elasticsearch. Say for example, like SageMaker and everything else happens in Elasticsearch, and this forms a feedback loop whereby you can learn from your data and then re-rank your uh, search results. With this, I will hand it over to Shivanga Nagbar uh, to take it ahead. Thank you so much, Mutu, for setting the context. Hi, everyone. My name is Shivang. I'm a principal engineer at Intu. Today, we'll do a deep dive on different use cases within QuickBooks Online product that leverages AWS Elasticsearch service at scale. Before we dig into the specifics, first, let me tell you a little bit about Intuit. We are a mission-driven global financial platform company. Our products, including TurboTax, QuickBooks, and Mint, are designed to empower more than 50 million customers around the world to improve their financial lives. So what is QuickBooks? QuickBooks is the world's largest small business platform serving over 7 million customers globally. It is primarily a SaaS accounting offering that helps small businesses track their income, expenses, inventory, also helps them track and pay bills, prepare for taxes, gain deeper knowledge and insights into their business, along with automating their workflows and integrations. And since accounting and bookkeeping can get quite complex for some small businesses to manage on their own, QuickBooks also connects small businesses to experts when they need one. At the heart of it all, we want small businesses to spend less time on accounting and compliance and focus more on what matters the most, the growth of their business. While we handle double entry bookkeeping, cost accounting, and compliance by leveraging Intuit's AI-driven experts platform to transform the QuickBooks ecosystem from their source of books to the source of their businesses. Digging deeper into specific use cases now, there are three major workflows that users 
generally leverage in order to find that information in QuickBooks Online? First and foremost, the explicit filter and advanced search where they get the granularity of exactly what they're searching for. Here, the user can specifically search data based on a field for a given entity. Secondly, the type ahead quick full search where the user is searching for someone or something specific in order to fulfill the creation of a business transaction. As you can see in the animation, the user uses quick fills for a customer they're trying to create an invoice for, along with searching and selecting the product that they are selling. And finally, type ahead, global, or as we call it, the universal search, which is more free form in terms of what the user is looking for. This specific search spans across all entities and expects a, a lot more denormalization of data. So how does the searchable data grow over time for a small business based on their use cases? Imagine that there is a small business that has been active with QuickBooks Online since 2005. It has created an invoice for Intuit as a customer in early 2008. Now as time passes by, the business grows and so does their data. Sometime during 2019, they want to search for all transactions for the customer Intuit. It basically translates the query to find invoice for the customer name that starts with Intuit. This exemplifies the fact that the expectation from our users is to search across all of their data, regardless of the time frame. As you can see, this means all data for a small business is essentially hot data for us. Now imagine the same across all 7 million small businesses that are currently active on QuickBooks Online. The aggregate data scale becomes massive and we can't really achieve archive or roll over the data since the business expectation is to search across all data. The current aggregate data size stands at greater than 100 terabytes of hot active data. Now that we have the context set for all different use cases, let me take a quick minute to walk through the high-level architecture. QuickBooks online services generate real-time data via domain events that are published on Kafka. We have a data ingestion service that ingests this data, transforms, denormalizes, and structures the data based on the use case and stores it in AWS Elasticsearch service. On the query front, we have exposed normalized query APIs specific to the user experiences. The user experiences make the API call via gateway, which is then forwarded to our query service, which further normalizes them into a combination of Elasticsearch queries such as match, fussy, terms, and filter queries. The results are then bubbled up as a response to the user experience in a paginated fashion. The important aspect to note here is that since the use case is real time, our SLAs are quite aggressive. We are currently at an SLA of four seconds end to end at a TP99 level. And this is across the full data set of greater than 100 terabytes for all 7 million small businesses. I'll now pass it on to Akbar, who will further dig deeper into the architecture and feature choices that we have made with Elasticsearch in order to achieve such aggressive SLAs with a massive data set at scale. Thank you and over to you, Akbar. Hello everyone, my name is Akbar and I'm a staff software engineer at Intuit. Thanks Shivang for providing context on QuickBooks Online, the search use cases we solve for, and that the data we search across is massive. We will now deep dive into some of the Elasticsearch features that we have used extensively to power search use cases and tune our domain for scale and performance. We have grounded ourselves in the domain when making decisions on what Elasticsearch features we use and how we use it. The first one I'm gonna talk about is routing. Elasticsearch provides a routing field that is used to route a document to a particular shard in an index. The default, if the 
client doesn't provide a routing field as ID, which indexes the data in random shards. The advantage of routing document based on a key can help with index and search performance. Let's take an example. We have an index called contact. When we index two documents with different IDs, but the same routing ID, they will be indexed in the same shard. Now, when making a search request, if we use a routing key, the same key as the index request, then the search request will go to the same shard and only one shard. Now, this helps with fast performance. If we don't use a routing key, the search request will go to all the shards, which will impact latency and performance. Now, we made this choice consciously because of two reasons. One was our search use case was type ahead and it had to be extremely fast. And second, the data set for contact index is not very large. However, the downside of routing is that it can hit a node and a shard really hard and can create hotspots leading to rejections. Therefore, routing is not useful in such use cases. Let's take an example where we have not used routing. Now, transaction data such as invoices, bills, estimates, expenses form majority of the data for QuickBooks. It is majority of the 100 terabyte data that Shivang spoke about in earlier slides. It also has infinite retention. The search use cases on transaction data are not very high on latency requirements, like contacts. Therefore, we don't use routing for this. Now, when two documents for transactions with two different IDs without a routing key are indexed, they will go to two different shards. Similarly, while making the search request without a routing key, they would go to two different shards. To summarize, based on the search use case and the data patterns that we have, we use routing on certain indexes versus others. The second feature I want to talk about is n-grams versus edge n-grams. So let's take a domain use case here. Small businesses have customers they sell products and services to. Customers can have the same name, but can have multiple locations that they operate out of. Let's take an example that Intuit is a customer of a small business and Intuit has locations in Mountain View, San Diego, LA, et cetera. Therefore, the small business, when they enter data for Intuit in their books, they would enter customer names such as Intuit INC at LA, Intuit INC at Boise, Intuit INC at Mountain View, et cetera. Similarly, when they search for Intuit, they could either search starting with the word Intuit or they could directly search for Boise, LA, Mountain View, and they would expect that those data shows up in the search results. So basically to generalize, it can be, data can be searched either from the beginning of a word or from the middle of the word. Now, based on this use case, we have used edge and grams for certain fields so that they can be searched from starting of the a uh, letter of the field, or we have used edge and grams for certain use cases where you can search for data even from a middle of a field. To note uh, and to keep in mind is that n grams when used occupy a lot more space on the document and the shard and also can cause noise uh, in search results. Therefore, it is extremely important to pick the fields that you want to use and grams on based on the use cases. The third feature for Elasticsearch that I want to talk about is custom analyzers. Now, there are use cases where the analyzers that are provided by Elasticsearch out of the box do not work. Let's take an example. 
QuickBooks is a financial product, and therefore we deal with amounts like a lot. Uh, amounts can have commas, can, they can have dots, etc. Therefore, the user can search for the data without the amounts, uh, without the dots, or without the commas, or by entering dots and commas. So we had to take care of all these. So how do we solve for this? So what we do is during indexing and search time, we use a filter such that anything which is non-numeric is replaced by an empty string. What this does is that no matter what format the user searches for an amount for, we show them the search results. Let's take another example, in this case, phone numbers. Phone numbers in the US itself can be entered in a variety of ways. It can have straight up digits, 10 digits, or it can have brackets or hyphens or a combination of both. So to solve for this, what we do is during indexing time, we replace any non-numeric letters with an empty string. While searching, we use a filter wherein special characters such as brackets or hyphens are replaced by empty string. So in the end, the user can search for any combinations or any formats. They will see the search results for their phone numbers. So in summary, there are use cases where you will have to create your own custom analyzers. And the support in Elasticsearch to create those is extensive. The fourth and the final feature that I want to talk about for Elasticsearch is optimistic concurrency. The architecture diagram that Shivang shared a few slides ago showed that we have two streams of data. One is a real-time data stream, and the second is a historic data stream. Now, there is a realistic possibility that we will get a document with the same version that will be saved in Elasticsearch from these two streams concurrently. So how do we solve for this? So we use something in Elasticsearch called as version type. We use the external version type, which means that we as a client are maintaining the version for a document in Elasticsearch. We, we, also, uh, we also increment the version by first reading the document, incrementing the version, and then save it into Elasticsearch. So now in this particular example, say the data from the historic stream made it first with version 22. Now when the data from the real-time stream with version 22 is tried to save to Elasticsearch, Elasticsearch will reject it. And we will retry it with incrementing the version to 23, and then it will be saved to Elasticsearch. So this is how we solve for concurrency in Elasticsearch using versioning. Finally, I would like to share some takeaways. It's extremely important to deeply understand the data, domain, and the use case that you're solving for. It's important to realize that something as small as a misclassified tokenizer or analyzer, such as ngram versus hngram, could massively impact your infrastructure cost with creating noise in, in your search relevancy. Also, to avoid multiple re-indexing of your data sets, as it could be very expensive over time, you want to understand the use case and strategize for the future. And finally, use routing very judiciously. Goes back to what we mentioned before, strike the right balance based on the use case and SLAs. Also, select a routing key strategically such that it will almost guarantee even distribution of data across all the shards in an index. This brings to the end of the presentation. On behalf of Intuit, I thank you all for tuning in.